Oh. Uh, well, Kareem made a dad joke. There would have been tremendous laughter and applause if everybody was on <laughs> Rest assured. Understandable. Uh, While we're uh, waiting a couple seconds, Mike, I think this weekend's events might be enough to get Kareem back into football. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm definitely getting roped in with uh, Fitzpatrick. Fitzmagic. Uh, <laughs> It's magic, rocking the beard and rocketing touchdowns. How can I not get interested? I mean, I'm a, I'm a Tampa Bay. We got fan. players retiring at halftime. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. So was it really because the team was bad? Like he said that he's just like I'm done. No, I mean he came out with like a nice explanation and just saying like, oh, you know, like, blah blah blah. It was a good run, but he was 30. Like he wasn't that old. <laughs> so for a uh, for you know uh, what did he, what did he play? He's been a journeyman and like. An NFL retiring, NFL player retiring at 30 is like, you know, he's probably played eight seasons. Like, that's a lot of wear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not that weird to retire at 30. It is weird to retire at halftime at 30. Oh, like he, yeah. Well, here's the thing, man. He didn't tell when, anybody. He just left. He was like, yeah, I'm out. And then, like, the players told the coach. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean he's like, where's Dante? Really and they're like, yeah, he's not coming back. Dude, can you imagine that conversation at home, like maybe with his wife, where they're deciding whether or not to retire? And he's like, look, if the team sucks, I'll just quit and retire then. She's like, what, are you just going to quit in the middle of the season? He's like, yeah, fuck it. I'll quit in the middle of the game if they suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And that's the point, man. When they get older in their career, they're playing for one of two things, either more money or a chance at a championship. And I don't know that he was – I don't know what his contract was, but apparently he just said fuck it. Yeah. Man of the barrel. Come I on. wanted to know if he got his game check though. Yeah, I think if you uh, think if you start, you're good. Yeah, maybe if you get ha if you play half the game, I don't know. It's probably in the contract. Apparently, I didn't watch the game, but apparently he made like most of the good plays on defense too. <laughs> like he had like a really good first half, and he still was just like, "Fuck this." I mean, to be fair, that actually doesn't surprise me that much because I would expect like if he was mad enough to quit i feel like he must have had a good performance you know what i'm saying like I, that was not intuitive to me for sure i don't know like if he's getting if he's getting torched like if he just got torched for a touchdown and then he's like that's it i retire <laughs> i don't think people are gonna look very kindly upon yeah, yeah. Him. Right. Like, his reputation <laughs> no <laughs> he's not doing that all right let's uh let's rope this in enough uh football talk i just wanted to let everybody know that kareem might be getting into football again uh, <laughs> Thank you for that. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, and lead us off a little bit here. Uh, we're the Crypto Basic Podcast. We have agreed to do a weekly show here. Where we talk about some of the top discussion points of the week that within the R Cryptocurrency subreddit. So I'm Mike. I'm here with Brent and Kareem. Do, do, do. Hello. Hey. Oh, hey. And uh, we're here to just go through, you know, a few of those articles. And then we kind of like to open it up to a little bit of Q&A. Anybody who wants to participate, we can unmute you if you would like we can you know just respond to the questions you guys post uh we're gonna try to put links to all of our content that we're going through so uh and we're Kareem, gonna do you want to get us started too. we're gonna try and we're gonna succeed yep all right <laughs> do or so, do not boys there is no try although right here it looks like cream you don't have the uh the our cryptocurrency I, I certainly do have oh well not the well yeah get the our crypto one yeah don't get worry i'll go one. succeed for you while you're talking uh, thank you well, that's why I said we were going to succeed because I know you you're there to prop us up whenever we fail, Brent. <laughs> that's that's what gives me the confidence is having you there. All right, so first story that we're going to cover this week: uh, Hester Pierce is back in the news. Do you guys remember that we covered her in one of our flagships? You guys remember her? She's the SEC commissioner. Yep. That, that actually understands crypto. Recently. Yeah, that was understands crypto, and even herself, she says that she really doesn't necessarily understand crypto she's just more of in favor of letting investors do their thing thank you very much uh brent coming there with the assist now get out of the way so i can score a goal so anyway <laughs> uh all right so she was given a speech uh sponsored by the cato institute uh apparently she was talking about how ever since that story of her dissenting and praising crypto she's been called the crypto mom um so there's like <laughs> yeah there's a little there's a little bit of a cringy part she's like well i've always wanted to be a mother so that's cool that's and so I'd cringy rather, yeah and she's like i'd rather be a free range mom than a helicopter mom so she does these like weird but overall when she really gets into the meat of it she gives a speech where she says 
look, the SEC is confusing their mission. And I actually really like her, her points on this. And she says, investing is inherently um, something that involves risk. So that means that our job isn't to protect investors from risk per se. Like if somebody loses their money, that's not our job. Our job is not to determine how good this is going to be on society or how, how good of a chance it has of succeeding or anything like that. It's just to protect very specific situations, right? Like we want to prevent scams and stuff. Um, but she really emphasizes, she's like, you know, the SEC of all people should understand that there's an inherent risk in investing and that part of the skill in investing is assessing those risks. So, and the part that I really love is when she says, it's important to remember that I'm a lawyer, not a technologist or a trader. So she's saying that she herself doesn't consider that she has the capacity to assess whether or not a new technology is gonna have a positive impact so that she shouldn't have the power to try to make that decision. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like basic, basically saying the SEC shouldn't be trying to make those judgment calls. Um, and, and the fact that we're rejecting, you know, some of these technologies implies that the SEC thinks that they should be making those decisions, that they should be making those judgments. Uh, uh, and anyway, I know this is dragging on a little bit, so I'll get to – she talked about five lessons that she thinks the SEC should learn from the recent uh, efforts to – um, get approvals on financial products like when the Winklevoss proposed their ETFs and there's been some Swedish crypto products. I believe Winklevi is the correct uh, plural of that there, Kareem. <laughs> Winklevi. <laughs> when the Octopi brothers. Um, anyway, so here are the five lessons. Number one, she says, let's not assume that we can know whether a product or technology will work and that uncertainty that it will work cannot be a disqualifier to allow it to play out in the market right off the bat. I like that because she's saying <laughs> it shouldn't be up to a bunch of lawyers to decide whether or not a technology is going to work. That makes perfect sense. Number two, either create a space for innovation with our regulated markets or people are going to go to other unregulated markets. <clears throat> and then in that one, she goes in depth of like basically saying, look, if we don't create an opportunity for people to invest in these things here, they're just going to go overseas and invest on something else, whether and that's proved by the fact that people were buying these Swedish um, investment products that were backed by Bitcoin or whatever. Right. Um, third, that they should be more specific and give more clarity to the uh, people who are actually starting the businesses, communicate with them. Don't leave them out in the dark, because what really kills them oftentimes is not what they can't do. It's the uncertainty of not knowing whether or not they're allowed to go in a particular direction because you don't want to invest resources. And then a year later, the SEC comes in and says, oh, no, that's actually you can't do it that way. Um, and the last one is that we need to be um, we need to keep in mind that the more burdensome the regulation is, uh, the more difficult that the more resources that I divested from the projects themselves in order to deal with the regulation. So all in all, it was a pretty cool speech basically <coughs> saying let the regulation get out of the way of innovation when it comes to technology. And I like that. And you guys know I'm actually kind of a little bit I'm, – I'm pro-regulation on a lot of things, but here I think she's on point. So I want to bring up something that we've talked about on uh, one of our shows before, which is this is directly related to – the the concept of like brain drain that we that we discussed i think it was last flagship or the one before it but if we can't get regular regulatory certainty in the united states where are the companies gonna go that are trying to start cryptocurrency uh or blockchain or uh or distributed ledger technology companies Wh gonna wyoming. go <laughs> it, not, wyoming is can't even get past the sec like we the the concept of uh, brain drain was something that Kareem brought up on the on the show, and I'd never heard it specifically, but it makes perfect sense to me. Like the best and brightest of the other countries are going to go where it's easiest to to either where they want to go. They're going to go to the coolest country. They're going to go to where they want to go with their innovation. We're not going to be attracting any in the United States. We're not going to be attracting any cryptocurrency uh, mecca. We're not going to have a, a Silicon Valley for crypto. That's happening right, in like Malta. So this is she's right. We need to 
if we're going to have any regulation, there needs to be certainty. And really, we shouldn't be stopping people from making investments on stuff. We need to be stopping them from getting scammed. So, Right, Brent. It's, it's not so much uh, – well, it is that as well. But the, the idea that people are not going to move to the U.S. to do this is a big problem. But more so, I believe, it's that it's going to cause the current people that live here to actually move away. And, you know, or at least we don't want to – We don't want to actually – like thwart the innovation that we are already incubating locally. Um, you know, for those of you that actually listen to our podcast and know our background, you know, we are all poker players. So the idea of, you know, every hand that I'm dealt in, I have to make a bunch of decisions and take risks according to the, you know, all the factors involved is something that we as a podcast stand very strongly for. Um, you know, I have a lot of issues with the fact that there's so much hypocrite hypocrisy, you know, in the government's, uh, you know, I, I, one thing that immediately came to my mind, you know, as Kareem was thinking of this, is just like the fact that we have lottery in like every state and it's just like a complete torch of people's money. And, you know, the fact that they can, they can on one hand say like, you know, crypto is like against, something that we should allow Americans can, to do. But on uh, the other hand, they're, you know, finding ways to, you know, feed off people that have ho- pipe dreams. Um, and, you know, one of the things that also we've talked about regarding um, regulations is about taxes and how a lot of people are afraid to enter these markets because they don't know what's going to end up happening tax wise. Um, you know, at one point there was, there was discussion that every single trade you make would be a taxable event which makes even the simple fact of entering and exiting just US dollar to Bitcoin like a really big problem. So I, I think that is a huge thing. If there was a way they would say, all right, guys, you know, these are what the regulations are going to be. Let's build some some structure for what this can be. And I think that would give people a lot of confidence. Yeah, not not like the yeah, the like Quasi just said, that's still the case. Every trade is still a taxable event if you happen to Be positive at the time that you make the trade. Imagine what's going to happen to people who are making trades at the beginning of this year when they have to do taxes for next year. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't even want to know what's going to happen with like, you're fucked. Like, you lost any trade you made in January is taxable, but you, I don't know if you can recover those losses on the future trades where you lost money. Like, I don't, I'm not 100. I'm not a tax. You know, oh, lost or taxes too. Okay, maybe maybe aren't maybe people aren't going to get fucked. I don't know. I don't know anything about taxes, but it's definitely scary. Look, but the bottom line is this proves the point, right? If we as individual investors can find that we are, you know, sometimes like de incentivized to take certain actions precisely because it's uncertain how we're going to deal with the situation. Imagine trying to be a crypto business. Like you're literally, like it's already difficult enough to start. Uh, a venture like that you know you're you're already taking on a tremendous amount of risk everybody knows the statistics that most new businesses fail most new ideas fail so you're already taking on a ton of risk now you have to deal with the additional risk of either a you have no idea what is allowed and what isn't allowed or b in order to find out you have to invest a tremendous amount of resources that you could have been investing in the idea that you're developing right and this is this commissioner's point um, and to bring it back to what you were saying, uh, Brent, about brain drain, and I think one of the things we were discussing in that, in that episode was how the fact that the internet was allowed to develop without many restrictions here in the United States actually benefited Americans a lot because the internet developed in a very America-centric way with American culture, American language, you know, English-based, et cetera, et cetera. So our society could benefit immensely from being a place where cryptocurrency business want to start. And like you said, other countries are taking advantage of that. And us just kind of playing um, difficult regulation isn't going to stop people from innovating, developing, and creating these businesses. So we're just letting ourselves fall behind. Yeah, all, all accurate. Uh, but Kareem, uh, we didn't go over your, uh, your favorite, yeah. your favorite uh, uh, comments here. Yeah, so I I don't know. I enjoyed this and I thought of you a little bit. So I was scrolling down the comments just to see if anything popped up. And this comment on its own isn't necessarily something that stood out to me, but the conversation that ensued. So a user, KSO2020, she was like, I got to say, I'm proud that she's a woman. Not too many ladies in the crypto bandwagon yet. We need more. That's all she said. And then somebody responded either seriously or trollish or I don't know. I 
kind of envisioned this person being you, Brent, but <laughs> somebody was like <laughs> uh, talking about it just being talking about this person's gender just based on gender sexist. You're sexist. And then this like little mini argument just devolves. And the final comment in the argument is fuck a Lambo. I want a cake made of muffins. <laughs> so that was my favorite uh, little exchange. <laughs> <laughs> uh you know what a cake made of muffins sounds pretty awesome i'm not gonna lie and and i'll take that because i don't know if i can i don't know if i can buy a cake made of muffins right now <laughs> with 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 the bags that i have left because that seems like a custom product that would be very difficult so how do you differentiate a cake made of muffins and a cake made of cupcakes man i feel like i would much rather have cupcakes uh you know i i think like there's blueberries and muffins Oh, 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 guys, I'm sorry. So this is my fault. I'd like to apologize to everybody. Brent and Mike, if you leave them alone and you let them just kind of get distracted, they'll start talking about food and cakes, and they'll really go on a tangent. So let me get him back on track. Hey, boys, no more muffin talk. <laughs> no, no, no. No, 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 no. It's no cake here. We need to cover stories. All right, all right. So I found a story in, in the uh, cryptocurrency subreddit that I thought was super interesting. And Brent, I'm going to ask you, is this the reason you picked Dodge D D uh, Dogecoin last night? I think it might have subliminally tricked me. Like, I definitely read this. And was like, oh shit, we've never cut. So like, we're gonna cover Doge later today, and it's gonna be our uh, our episode for tomorrow. And I was kind of drunk last night, and I was like, you know what, fuck it, we're doing Doge. I'm get we haven't done Doge yet. It's time. And uh, yeah, I think this might have subliminally got me. All right, so this story is. Let me see. Oh, I I failed at delivering a link. Uh, that is yeah. my fault. Ooh. I apologize to both my team and the listeners. Oh, you didn't even put it in the outline. Wow. All right. Yeah, well, no, that's door. what we'll I was apologizing for. I got it. No, we'll get a link for you. Go ahead. All right. So, so Elon Musk tweets at the founder of Dogecoin. His name is Jackson Palmer. And the tweet is he, he tags him and says, if you can help get rid of the annoying scam sc spammers, that would be much appreciated. And it was it was simple. At, and I expected the story to kind of end there. Uh, Jackson responds basically saying like, hey, uh, your, your, your DMs aren't open, so I can't quite, you know, send you any of that info. But, you know, if you can get in touch with me, that'd be great. And and sure enough, because um, the way that the, the screenshot of the tweet was, um, there was an eight, there was an eight hour delay. And then immediately there was a follow-up from Jackson where he says, there's an update. Uh, Elon has the script. We had a good chat on how Jack and the Twitter team should definitely automate and fix this problem on their end, though. So by the time he was able to respond, Elon was, like, ready and, like, they have a full conversation. He delivers the script to him, and they had a full conversation all within that hour. So I think that's pretty interesting. Then it, to me, that shows that Elon's at least reasonably interested in solving this problem. Um, and, and truthfully, it's a problem that needs to be solved. We know that the every time that people that are relevant in crypto are posting, these mimic copy <laughs> accounts on these Twitter bots are responding, basically trying to trick people into sending Ethereum to you know accounts, and they're trying to steal funds from people, and it's becoming a problem. So I'm really happy that... Uh, there is a solution being reached, but I just didn't expect these players to be involved. Yeah, no, look, everybody wants us to stop. This is like, it's ridiculous. If you're, uh, if you're a verified account, if you're anything, like you just have all these little ETH bots going after you. And, and it's really even more ridiculous that the creator of Dogecoin has a script to stop it. And clearly people know, because it's not like Elon randomly picked him. Somebody told him, hey, this guy can... This guy can take care of that, and he reached out to him. So I don't know why we still have this problem. It's ridiculous. Now, luckily, we're not big enough in the crypto space to get our to get bots spamming on our links. So that's good. We're. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say one thing. As a just to be fair, usually, if you see a major problem, and there's a perceived solution that's like super simple. In this case. I, like, I agree with you. We haven't seen enough effort from Twitter to try to deal with the situation. But I'd like to know why. And just because one individual has managed to, like, maybe they have a script that allows them to block them out in their own uh, account or something. There might be a bigger 
effect. You know what I'm saying? Like a bigger net worth effect or other considerations um, that we're not taking into account. Like it's very possible that the solution that this guy has wouldn't work if it was scaled out to the entire system, if that makes sense. I yeah, don't I don't know. It's saying. We've always said if they have the same picture – or the same display name, they can't be the first comment or whatever on your thing. Like that seems to be the easiest way to to handle the problem. So maybe like if you unleash that Twitter wide, then it sucks or something. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? It's, <clears throat> yeah, it's difficult to say. But as a side note, I don't know if you guys remember, but the first time that Elon Musk tweeted about Ethereum, I think it was about this and. Um, uh, I think Vitalik was like upset. He was kind of like, oh, I wish the first time that Elon tweeted about Ethereum, um, it wasn't about this. But I remember before, like there was something about Elon and, and Vitalik and asking Jack to address this problem with the bots. I could be merging two stories there. You no, know, that like, is what happened. Like 70%. Okay. No, that that is exactly what happened. Uh, Vitalik had requested Elon to, you know, or he basically said, I wish you would spend this you know, energy in a, in a healthy way. So it's interesting to watch this kind of evolve. Yeah. Uh, I really hope that they get it under control. I mean, Twitter has just, you know, it's a, it's a necessary evil almost for, uh, for content producing, especially, <clears throat> but it isn't a, it isn't a good platform. There isn't really a good social platform left. Like in my opinion, I don't uh, discord, I guess, but <laughs> the, they're, I, Facebook has gotten, you know, too intrusive. Everything else has gotten too filled with bots. Like we tried Steam for a while, and Steam is just like upvote me and I'll upvote you. I don't know. Like the uh, the wholesome MySpace experience has been ruined. It's gone. Oh yeah, the wholesome MySpace experience. <laughs> so I just wanted to add a couple of the comments that I that I found in that thread. Uh, the one that made me laugh right away was from uh, Zombie C said to celebrate getting rid of those annoying bots we're giving away eth to all my loyal followers <laughs> it, it was it was simple but i thought it was well done um but something that i found uh as an interesting comment from crypto cryptonair um and they said i've been watching jackson's videos for a while now and i believe he's one of the most intelligent cryptocurrency individuals out there he doesn't give you the usual bs about why something is going to the moon instead he tells you the truth about it which usually ends up being issues and problems. Most bag holders, like open quote, mooners, end quote, don't like hearing it, though. So, uh, Brent, I just wanted to uh, thank you again for somehow bringing Doge to our attention. If this guy is uh, as wonderful as this person's making him out to be, then I'm, I'm happy that we're moving that up in the pipeline. Yeah, I, it sounds like sounds like he shares a little bit of a, a little bit of our vision and It'd be it'd be cool to have him on the show. Hey, if anybody knows this guy, reach out to him. Tell him we'll. Uh... Well, don't and let's not forget too. Like he created Doge sort of as a prank. It was kind of a fun experiment or a fun thing to show how these cryptocurrencies could gain value. It was it was memeish, right? So his his own ability is kind of independent from the project since the project has taken a life of its own and maintained. And on the one hand, it has shown one of the strongest and closest knit communities and the value that that has. But on the other hand, it, it has shown how sometimes the underlying code is irrelevant because nobody has been developing for Doge. Nobody has been updating Doge and people are still, uh, you know, supporting it. So Doge is pretty, pretty unique. <laughs> it, it, like it's got the weirdest pros and cons. Yes, that is that is absolutely true. That's what I found in in the research I was doing. Uh that in like doge so this guy actually kind of i don't want to say hates doge but like he he has a lot of bad stuff to say about it when he talks about it because he's like it shouldn't be what it is but but here we have but it proves the the community effect the network effect that can happen here so like you said it both the best and worst parts of crypto are exemplified inside of doge so mm -hmm. well you guys want uh talk about a project that has definitely not been overhyped at all ever at any point oh yeah uh let's let's definitely talk about on you know i like to talk about like the fringe projects that haven't been overhyped kareem yeah so have you guys heard about this uh eos eos it's uh <laughs> quasi, quasi thought it was gonna be ripple <laughs> yeah well that was a good read quasi. That, that wasn't far off not a bad we almost uh... there <laughs> We're going to talk about EOS, guys, and here's a new story 
Uh, yeah, EO's bet. That is correct. Nice. So this story is perfect for us because, uh, full disclosure, we've never been big fans of EOS the way that it played out. And on top of that, we're all degenerate gamblers. And this story is about EOS sucking and gambling. So here we go. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> so this site is called EOS Bet. And apparently it just went on this sick run where one user was rolling dice and running like God for... 36 hours winning a bunch of like consecutive bets while nobody else won and got paid out six hundred thousand dollars in 36 hours of what is apparently either the craziest hot streak ever in the history of gambling or their smart contract got breached now what do you guys think eos bet said about the whole situation yes we got hacked and our gambling operation is suspect yeah well I mean, that's what you usually do you admit you admit that you have some faults in your code. You tell people you're going to work on finishing it, um, and you know, and then you, and then you go forward. They <laughs> definitely wouldn't go with the. It's a feature, not a bug, right? No, no. <laughs> so according to them, they're just totally trying to play it off like this guy ran super good. They're just like, no, he was just really lucky, like just really lucky. But here's the thing: aside from the fact that this account or whatever basically ran incredible for 36 hours consecutive the other piece of evidence that is clearly indicative of a fault in the code is that just a week ago or so on september 10th a story came out of another betting platform that's backed by eos called deos games d-e-o-s games and guess what they got hacked and paid out 24 jackpots in a one hour period and lost $26,000 in the process. So now we have two websites or platforms that are essentially built or backed by EOS that have been hacked and manipulated. This right. project I, is a total dumpster fire. Oh my God. All right. So I have, I have several things to say here. One, uh, it sounds like Dan Larimer created this cryptocurrency world that just like has all these like caves hidden in it. And like he just he just finds new people that wants to go into new caves and find new things. Um, you know what this also reminds me of? It reminds me of the the casino boom throughout the 1900s, where there were people like I heard all these stories about these like traveling gamblers that would go from casino to casino, and they'd try to like physically hack slot machines, and they'd try to physically hack you know some sort of the table games, whether it was. Uh, you know, trying to see which dealers in certain games would reveal cards and that, you know, they could find an exploit and just kind of like bet the max and just like fully take advantage of this casino. Or if they, if it were more likely to succeed, then maybe play it low and careful. I mean, this is like a whole interesting evolution of the same thing. Yeah. And as a side note, you know, now that we're discussing this, I love the fact that, um, Gambling, in a way, I think it pro it provides a really good ecosystem for this because um, there's enough of a stake where there's an incentive to cheat it, right? There's gambling. There's money to be made. So if you can manipulate the system, if you can hack the system, if you can affect the smart contract, if you can breach and manipulate things in any way, then it's very possible that you can make out with some money. But at the same time, it's not like... This is super important stuff where people's lives and privacy are on the line when it, as opposed to like, let's say medical records or bank information or some of the stuff that uh, is really important to keep secure. So I almost feel like these gambling platforms provide really good experimental platforms for the security and safety of a project. Uh, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the members of the chat was saying that they actually wrote an article on this and basically the guy was able to place bets without actually paying in. So he wasn't running good. He was literally just like losing nothing when he lost and only winning stuff when he won. So. Okay, so it's a different exploit. Right. He didn't manipulate the results of the dice or whatever, but he was able to manipulate the system. He was able to exploit yeah. the smart contract, right? Ultimately, it's still part of the same ecosystem. Yep. So that that's crazy. And then uh, there was another link that's like showing how, uh, how EOS Bet was attacked. They gave a code. I don't understand how to read it, but... Uh, Side yeah. note, my favorite comment, by the way, funds are not safer. Not safer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I figured you'd enjoy that. You one. know what? If you want to find a way to break something, give somebody the ability to gamble with it, and they'll figure out if it's uh, they'll figure out if there's an exploit. I mean, we we've all been a part of different advantage gambling using players' reward systems to uh, to get to get an advantage here and there. We've had friends that are uh, they take advantage of sports betting lines. You know, we've uh, we I've I've been backed off as a card counter in multiple casinos. Uh, but and we all play poker, so like we we know that there is a very specific angle when there's gambling where you're not you you know you're you're gonna try to find the edge, especially when somebody's telling you you can't beat us. So yeah, if like that is it's almost better than a hackathon. Just tell people like that we have a secure gambling contract, and then you'll find somebody coming in here winning six hundred thousand. Yeah. <laughs> So, any uh, any more interesting stuff to talk about on that thing? On this one, no. I just uh, look. I don't like to toot our own horn, but we've been warning people about EOS since this podcast started. That's all I'm saying. We're not beeping our own horn. We're just saying beep beep. Anyway, yeah. Go ahead. Now, by warn, we've never said this is a, <laughs> like a, an all out scam or whatever. Like, even though it's it looks like it's just a bad project, but we also. We, we always point out red flags when we see them, and we pointed out, if you listen to our EOS episode, we weren't even as strongly, like, I don't want to say anti-EOS, but like, uh, EOS, I don't know, EOS, I don't know the right way to say this, but uh, <laughs> we weren't as strongly anti, we definitely brought up all the red flags, this was before mainnet and everything, but since mainnet, we've only seen more red flags, and this w- this project was not mature, it wasn't ready, and... It's not. I don't know. Again, I hope. I hope it fixes itself. I hope that we end up with a. I hope that we end up with that value not just evaporating into the, into you know nothingness and having a real project out of it. But uh, in the meantime, every week or so, we get to get a lot of great content for the show, talking about some other thing that is messed up <laughs> on EOS. Yeah, yeah. All right, so. Brent, why don't you give us some good news about 2020? <laughs> so this this uh, this article fit into our usual, um, you know, th- the the title of the article is totally correct. So here we have um, the title was 2020 will be worse, or, or sorry, Economist. 2020 will be worse than the 2008 recession. Will favor Bitcoin. Uh, so. You would assume that this article is an economist explaining why we're looking at a 2008 recession and how cryptocurrency or Bitcoin is the is the answer or is where people will turn to save themselves from this. Uh, so first, I want to say that even if that's what was said in the article, it's the opinion of one economist. One economist knows about as you know, one economist in a vacuum. If you take all economists together, realize it's a very pseudosciency field, like. It is really tough to predict market movements. Black swans happen all the time. And one economist doesn't know any more than necessarily like your astrological sign. Maybe a little bit more. But like it's really hard to put a lot of uh, emphasis on just one person's prediction. So if this person's saying 2020 is the year, that's like really hard to uh, say is like going to be accurate. Um, yeah. <laughs> That, that in, and they might be right, and there's going to be economists like this guy that made very specific predictions that in 2021, we're going to be like, oh, see, they called it, they called it, you should have listened to this guy, but no necessarily Well, that's just it. mathematically how it works out. If, exactly. If so many economists make it so many predictions and so many will be correct. Yes. So this one, though, didn't say shit about Bitcoin. Like, it was just added. This, the the particular economist that this uh, article was focusing on is anti cryptocurrency, <laughs> so the title made it look like this guy was like, yeah, there's gonna be a recession and crypto's the answer. No, they actually had to put uh, put a retraction of their title, saying, oh, sorry, we like had to change our title and took out the part about Bitcoin completely. It was just like added by the person who wrote the article, not by the economist. So the article, so really the economist was just talking about the fact that the U.S. is going into a big depression, 
based on the policy and stuff. I, I just opened it up. I was looking at it, and, like, at no point does he get into the cryptocurrency at all, Brent. No. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> no. It's just, like, a complete editorial ad by the person who was writing it. <laughs> and then they made the title make it sound like this guy was – was saying that and again like one one of the uh one of the comments i i didn't paste it but if you scroll down one of the comments actually has like a link to the guy talking poorly about cryptocurrency as a whole so that yeah they don't even like it but my my favorite particular comment was uh proof master you have to love these titles what's next my neighbor buy more btc <laughs> <laughs> it's true like i it's so the the biggest issue I think we have collectively about the the space, especially uh, on on Reddit. Now, I understand that you have to make a title interesting to get upvotes for the people who aren't even going to bother to click on what you're doing. Um, we even tried to get a clickbaity article through, uh, not article, but clickbaity thing through to get Mike to eat ketchup. But uh, luckily, the auto mod caught us. But uh, <laughs> the 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 number of times that I click and read about something and the title is unbelievably misleading is too high. Now I know this is also a microcosm of the world. Like you you go to anything that's not like one of the you know very middle leaning uh, news sources like the Independent or whatever that you just really have to do your research, read the article, and ignore the the clickbait title or not even clickbait just the biased title like the in the crypto space we're going to have a bias towards titles that are either very pro crypto or very like fuddy on coins like tron or eos or um or i don't know ripple that like you gotta even though we we do dislike those coins you know just because there's an article that has a title that's bad doesn't mean that it was necessarily the right thing so always read Always go in with an open mind and realize that a lot of times these titles and these conclusions are very wrong. All right. So now that we gave a little lecture, do you guys want to have a little fun with this discussion? For sure. Um, so when you were saying, Brent, about like, okay, it's just one economist. Uh, and I, I, I 100% agree with you. Like that's one person's opinion is one person's opinion. And I feel like whenever we're I'm reading articles like this, one of the things that I really want is what's the underlying reason given, you know, like, why is the date given or why is this uh, whatever given? But anyway, I think it's in a lot of circles, in a lot of political and economic and market circles, that narrative that we're getting really close to another crisis and that it could be bad. Um, you know, that's that's a shared sentiment. So my question is. Do you guys – can we think of any reasons or, or not reasons why it might be good or bad for crypto? Because I think that there's arguments to be made on both cases, right? That if we have a big crash, it could be really bad for crypto because, um, you know, a lot of investments are going to pull out. And there's also arguments to be made that it really would benefit cryptocurrency if there was – a big crash or that the next crash might have people flee to crypto either of my, you guys my quick opinion on that is that it would be it would be equally bad short term but very good long term i think like even if we have another 2008 and like we just have another like several years of like catching up to do economically that there's no way in my mind that can view that can help crypto in the next two years. Like it just it, the short term, I think it would hurt it a lot. But I think it, it it would be one of the many big foundations that would help gain mass adoption. I think it depends uh, what it, how exactly the recession plays out. Now we we talk about the recession from a very U.S. centric standpoint, and that that 2008 recession did affect the rest of the world at the time. Inter interestingly, if we had another one in the United States, I'm not certain that it would be as worldwide as the last time because I feel like we've been alienating ourselves a little bit more from the financial world, like pissing off our allies, putting tariffs on things. Like, I, it, If it was a very localized recession to the United States that does – even though a lot of the global reserve currency is in the dollar uh, – if it's localized to the U.S. and it's a lot of dumb shit that's happening here, and it, of course it'll affect the world as a whole, but that will be better for cryptocurrency 
And we won't see a lot of pullout of investment if the U.S. is the one that's crashing and nobody else. And in fact, I know from the 2008, it was kind of U.S. first and then everybody kind of followed. It's entirely possible that if that happens again and there is a way for everybody to kind of hedge against that, which is in cryptocurrency, that we don't have a crash of both at the same time. But it's also possible that the entire world's economy is a little bit overinflated. It comes down and everything is and the world recession happens at the same time, in which case I don't think cryptocurrency can save itself from that. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I think that, you know, yes, I, there's definitely some truth to the fact that from a political standpoint and when it comes to certain products with the tariffs, we've become more alienated. But I don't think that in any real meaningful way our economy is any less interconnected than it was in 2008. It might even be more interconnected. You know, we still have... Um, just even from who owns the companies, so where the companies are distributed, where, you know, all the different markets everywhere else, tons of countries have U.S. debt, tons of U.S. companies uh, have companies everywhere else. I, I just feel like if the United States economy came crashing down in this world right now, it would be equally devastating to the rest of the world, I think, to the majority. But the point that you're making is still, I think, pretty relevant, which is that depending on how things are going in the U.S., it could affect the crypto markets differently. And I think that the main argument I see for that is if the dollar, if there is a sequence of events where the dollar does stop being the, the global reserve currency, then I think that we could really see a jump in the value in Bitcoin, at least in relation to the dollar, just because now all of a sudden all the printing that we do isn't so equally distributed with every country in the world, but actually we start probably feeling um, the consequences of that extra money printing more heavily because the dollar is more concentrated in the U.S. Um, but it's so hard to tell. I mean, everybody does seem to think that there's a crash coming in, and it does make sense, but it's almost impossible to predict how it will affect crypto. We're just kind of speculating, obviously. And we are not financial advisors. Please don't no. take any of our advice. We are idiots. Uh, we, you know... We have no idea if there's actually a recession coming. We think there probably is, and we're hoping that crypto is a nice little haven, especially because all the money that we put in there is basically gone, so the <laughs> hopefully it comes back. Yeah. All right, so I'll take, a, I'll take a lighter tone then. I don't know if you guys saw this, but um, somebody posted. It was, it was one of the top posts this week. He's like, oh, my wife's crypto blunder had me in stitches today. And it's just a self-post. Somebody's telling the story about how they got their girl into crypto. We're all familiar with that story. She's like, oh, this is cool. You know, she wants to have her own portfolio. Da, da, da. He sets her up on Blockfolio so she can follow it. And he's telling how she's been saying, like, wow, crypto really went down. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, don't worry about it. I'll be back. And she's like, wow, I mean, it really went down. Holy crap. It really, really... <laughs> like went all the way down and he's like uh yeah you know but it's okay and then he like glances over at her block folio and he's like wait why do you have that in there and it says bcc and she's like what bitcoin cash <clears throat> no 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 and he's like no that's not bitcoin cash that's bitcoin <laughs> anyway <clears throat> hilarious um <laughs> That sucks. I could totally see that happening to people. Like, oh, Bitcoin Cash. Ah, oh, dude, that sucks, man. Uh, so sad story, but uh, their suffering was for all of us to be entertained for a little bit. So we should definitely give them some props. I didn't Wait, say how do you make that mistake? mistake? What do you mean? Was it on the exchange? No, no. Like they just put it on their Delta or like or their Blockfolio or whatever wrong. So they bought the oh, right coin, but they were tracking it wrong so they thought that their value went to stone zero now oh, they have a lot more money than they cheap. thought but <laughs> oh well, this is like a good beat story then yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and of course the top comments are all no 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh carlos yep uh, I, I i will say i did reach out to carlos on twitter and asked him to come on the show he did not respond so I can't Shocking. be the first one that's ever said that to him, but I did promise him that we would uh, we would treat him fairly and give him his okay, well, time, but whatever. 
Okay, didn't so that's, agree to that. That's, that. that's dumb. You don't know. That doesn't mean that's not how you're approaching him. If you would have told me that you were reaching out to him, I would have told you how to structure the invite in a way that appealed to him. See, what you oh, do is yes. you tell him, hey, Carlos, for every person that you get that signs up with the Crypto Basic podcast, you get 15%. And if they get other people, you get 5% of what they get. And then we just make it look like a pyramid scheme. And he's and in. He's like, oh, yeah, can we do a partnership with Herbalife? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, 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 Herbalife. Come. Sorry, guys. We, uh, we're we also don't like MRIs. All right, so at this point, we usually like to open it up to the listeners. Is there any questions you guys have? Any questions? Any feedback? What's going on? Michael Lockie being all professional. But, yes, let's open the floor up. The bar is so low that me being professional is pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> uh it's true so anybody want to hop on anybody have any questions anything we didn't cover and now we can rant about somebody it. posted this article which i haven't gotten a chance to read yet but again the title sounds great i have no idea what the actual article is but it says u.s court seizes lambo crypto millions from dead dark web kingpin oh my god i saw that good what? yeah I, I skipped by that too but let's it, definitely revisit that it's really long and I want to learn about it. Look, we'll read about that and talk about it on the flagship unless somebody wants to pop on and actually discuss this with us now, because this sounds awesome, but I don't want to start like, again, the title, you never know what's actually going to happen once you, yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you know, drug busted kingpin Lambo. They All right. Well, in the first story, paragraph, it's like somebody got a parking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> the first paragraph involved, uh, Alexandre Cazaces, a Canadian national who committed suicide, committed suicide by hanging in a Thai prison last summer. Holy shit! I like where this is going. Man, this might be great. Real? Yeah, no, this got very. He he, uh, operated on the darknet marketplace Alpha Bay. Yeah, seems like a good rabbit hole. I don't want to waste anybody's time with reading it now necessarily, but uh, I'll say twenty-three million dollars in assets. 23 million and it it recorded enormous sums of money lavish real estate holdings and expensive cars that played up for a life of luxury mike sorry this is 26 years old i've been sparked okay so 26 million dollars at 26 years old 23 million dollars okay sorry 23 million dollars so here's the question that i'm posing to you and brent you how many years would you be willing to spend in a thai prison if there's $23 million waiting for you at the other end. Oh, dang. Uh, I don't know. I feel like Ty is one of the worst prisons, I think. Huh. Uh, if JJ yeah, was here, I'd ask her all about Thai prisons. But the, I I don't know. I have no idea what the Thai prison system's like. I mean, is it better or worse than the U.S. prison system? Uh, that's, that's the... I've heard many, many people say it's significantly worse and very dangerous. I feel like you just saw like an episode of like Locked Up Abroad or something. That would be a <laughs> yeah, good Ty guess, but that is there, incorrect. Yeah, Ty, look, trust me, I don't want to go to a third world prison for sure. I All know right. you can go to prison in Thailand for like, like life for selling drugs. Like, really, it's really uh, easy to go penalty. to prison. For a long you can time. get the death penalty for selling drugs or consuming drugs. My understanding is just having drugs on you. The max offense is up to death penalty. No, I've heard Which is they really high guys. By they the way. also <laughs> like intentionally target like any foreigners and like entrap them and then like totally Ooh. try to. I don't know. know blackmail them. Nah, tur- tourism is like the main thing in Thailand. Well, I see what you're saying though. I'm sure maybe there's like corrupt officers that yeah. Scare All the right. So this people. guy, he had 8.8 million dollars in cryptocurrencies pulled across 1,600 Bitcoin. 8,300 Ethereum and uh, 3,600 Zcash and an unknown amount of Monero. Yep, Wait, it's hard to know that... how much Monero. Real quick, guys, it was 23 million when we started reading about the article. It's now 22 million. Just to <laughs> track with the market. Oh, it's 19 million. Sorry, guys. And it's gone. And it's gone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, as far as time, I, as far as your question, Kareem. I would probably spend a non-zero amount of time in Thai prison for twenty twenty six million dollars, uh, uh, especially four if years? it's payable in crypto. Uh, four years paid in Bitcoin at the end. Four like, years is that's just like going to high school. I would need to be able to like train before I went though. Like I'd have to be all like Rocky style and get like buff and shit. 
So, oh my God, Brent! It would take that's what prison for. I thought to get you into Rocky style. A hundred years of nonstop training. <laughs> You're gonna train for a hundred years so you can go to pro Thai prison for a high school. Come on. God, my number's complex. I'm trying to think. Uh, Twenty-three million is a lot of money. Um, I'm thinking eight years. Wow! Damn! Wow! Holy shit! You guys are insane. Sorry, I'm, I shouldn't be cursing here. But why? Hey, what is your number? Uh, Mike, I'm a pussy, bro. I don't know if I would do it for six months. Thai prison? I don't know if I'm gonna make it out. I don't know. Shit. Listen, I would. My, my daughter would be 16, so we could have a quinceanera when I get out. It'd be great. Yeah. See, that's the thing. I have a dog, and so four years is like 40 years. <laughs> I can't be away for that long. Wow. You have a little human. That's easy. Like four years means nothing. <laughs> If I'm away for five years, that's like half of my dog's life. I can't do it. That's a good point. Wow. Kareem just – Kareem, you, you said I have a daughter, and Kareem's like, yeah, well, I have a dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's another point. I don't even speak Thai. So not only am I going to have to navigate an, an environment I'm unfamiliar with, I would have a hard time navigating an American prison. Now I got to do it in Thai? I, got, I haven't even learned Thai. All right. So How long would you guys do it in an American prison? For twenty three million dollars? Yeah. It, it's it's not twenty three million in Bitcoin today, right? It's at the end. Oh, that's true. That's gonna be so many. Oh, if it's Bitcoin. a forced hodl, it's even better. Could be. Yeah, but it could be nothing. <laughs> I guess that's oh, true. Oh my god, that would be the worst beat ever. <laughs> <laughs> You're All just right, watching like the market's tank when you're in there and you're like, no, I agreed to do this. No, no you just get a you just get a, a handwritten letter every eight months from one of your friends telling you how much Bitcoin is. Dude, it literally what if what if it just keeps going up until it's worth like three hundred million and literally the last year when you're about to get out, they invent quantum computing and they crack shot two fifty six. And it's like and oh, yeah, it's Bitcoin, gone. Went, Bitcoin went to zero overnight. Uh all right. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying this very informative intellectual conversation between <laughs> high-minded crypto specialists. Yep. Oh, oh, uh, update from last week. So last week we talked about that article about the guy eating ketchup, right? Oh, my God. I can't believe we didn't say this. So if you were interested in the fact that we were going to make Mike do the same thing, now we didn't have him actually eat ketchup. He did eat ketchup, but there were uh, – <laughs> We made it worse, actually. So we, we tried to put this post through on our cryptocurrency that said, uh, if this gets 100 upvotes, we'll do the punishment for this guy. That guy deleted his account, by the way. The guy that like um, that posted that he would eat ketchup if Bitcoin uh, wasn't under a Real certain quick, price. Brent, before you go on, I would have no shot at eating a bottle of ketchup. I thought that wouldn't be that hard. I, I'm thinking now that there's just no chance. But the ketchup was the only one that you kind of got down without a problem. You were just like, uh, oh, warm SpaghettiOs. Nah. Anyway. Good. Uh, we, we had Mike eat. Oh, there's, yeah, that's it. Uh, we had Mike go, f he had five coins in his portfolio that he picked. So we picked five condiments to represent those five coins. It was, uh, blue cheese, mustard, ketchup, uh, and Tabasco sauce. And then we Captain Morgan. And there was, like, a little bit of other stuff going on there. So if you want to see Mike try to eat those things, go ahead and uh, watch that. If you want to watch me almost vomit, then please watch this video. And if you do watch this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. <laughs> Spo spoiler alert. It's pretty long and uh, basically felt terrible the whole time. So. Yeah, Kareem, <laughs> Kareem is like behind the camera like, guys, guys, we have to stop this. We have to stop. Yeah, there was a point where he was pleading us to stop. <laughs> yeah, it felt cruel and unusual. Everything about it. And that idea See, came from this exact uh this exact last thing week's last conversation. week. Yeah. This ha this inception was here. Yeah. So so th those of you who had a part in that, thank now you. Now that for... nobody's listening for the next twenty minutes. <laughs> yeah, so that was uh that was fun. I'm not particularly good at making YouTube thumbnails, but uh we had three camera angles, and well, really two. One was on me, and uh, and then Mike and Kareem. It was it was fun. There is absolutely no cryptocurrency uh, analysis presented in that video. <laughs> Although Mike, I gave a speech. Yeah, for you each did coin. give like a speech each time you went to eat like the particular condiment about how that coin treated you and how you felt about it. 
how he felt about it going forward. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, all right. So, all right, yeah. Any anything else anybody wants to talk about? Let's pull something else. Let's do it. You got two minutes. Elliot's on his way up. I I I saw him join our uh, our Discord after last week. So, I agree. Hilarious. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it was really, really, really funny, Elliot. I really recommend you go back in time and experience that. <laughs> well, El- Elliot, we're actually talking about the catch-up <laughs> from last week. <laughs> funny you bring that up. Yeah, the video above, Elliot, is Mike's punishment having to drink five different condiments based on that punishment. It's super long. Well, four condiments and some spiced rum. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he did pick Bitcoin, so I wanted to, you know, reward him with some. Oh, sick brag, Elliot was already in our Discord and saw it. Yeah, oh, that nice. that was uh. How many did we get? Like five views on this? Like we. Lisa made me watch it last night in bed. <laughs> she made you watch yourself. <laughs> well, I mean, like she had it on blaring volume, and I was like next to her. It was kind of hard not to. <laughs> That's funny. She was laughing her ass off the whole time. <laughs> I, I'm glad she enjoyed your suffering as much as we did. Well, I did. Kareem wasn't enjoying it at all. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like, no, no I stuff. hated that whole thing. Honestly, well, I did. she like she was able to enjoy it because I was like <laughs> next to her and felt fine. Like I wasn't like yeah, still suffering. Kareem got me in the moment while I was suffering, and his heart was in pain. <laughs> yeah, and then it was all framed under the guise of. This is somehow providing uh, satisfaction to me. And I'm like, ah, this is awful. I, why are you doing this? Until you had to pour like half cups of water. Yeah. Yeah, true. <laughs> All right. Anything to wrap this up, guys? I don't know. No? I see uh, I see Cashman typing. Nice is typing. Maybe we'll have something to hit right. before we go. And if Here, not, I'll, we'll... hit, I'll hit the space bar too. Oh, Michael. Several people Several are typing. People? Typing, I'm typing. That's it. Everybody's <laughs> typing. It, it's it's insane. You're gonna get a bad about it going. Oh, 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 here they come. Mostly, <laughs> mostly the time I will never get back. <laughs> oh, slammed on. Uh, so nice said that he read a post on 4chan about Nano. He didn't have the link. Uh, talking about how Nano is doing nothing about the Bitrail hack. Uh, Nano said BitRail was the most secure exchange for nano trading, but they didn't take any actions on the hack. Um, yeah, but Nano was actually one of the coins that I had in that portfolio contest, uh, and I like a lot about the coin, and I hate everything about the the BitRail hack. Um, the or hack, quote unquote. I mean, I'm using that term loosely. This is to remind people I actually used BitRail and withdrew my Nano before the hack, but like I could have easily been a victim here. Sick brag. <laughs> No, I so they they said it was secure on Bitrail because they built the they built the exchange kind of around Nano, so of course they're going to say that. And the exchange probably was secure, and it was the guy stealing everybody's money that wasn't secure. So like the you know you can you can only account for the human element so much. I don't know. Uh, I don't know enough about that situation to comment on it, but I know the Nano team did originally work with uh, start working with with different exchanges somehow to try and mitigate where this money was going. And they're probably cooperating with authorities, but there's not really a nano team so much. Like they're, they're complete decentralized and they kind of work on a hundred percent, uh, like, you know, donation. So, but the good news is about those on BitRail is that at the time nano was worth about 35, $40 a coin. So, whether they got their money stolen or not, they're pretty much in the same boat anyway. So, the uh, it, now that it's down to two dollars a coin, we're looking at a uh, near hundred percent loss. So, that if you didn't keep your money on the exchange, at least you got your like you know two percent out of it, whereas nobody else did. Hmm. Obviously, you could have you could have sold some in the meantime, but. Uh, I, the more you know. Yeah. Bum, bum, bum. I, Mike, what did I when I bought Nano from you? How much was it? Thirty-two. <laughs> I I know I specifically bought some Nano from Mike at some 
absurd number right before the big rail hack so i know i feel like i just got uh you know as hacked as they did seifu land they actually should rename binance to seifu land <laughs> all right let's uh let's wrap this up i uh, I'm I'm uh, ready to get into Doge 101. That's what we're about to record now. So. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, guys. See you next week. All right. We're out. All right. Have a good one. Thanks again, SGP.